right, here we are, another episode with Canada on the Rocks. I am your host, Fadi Kudair, and a local realtor here with Sutton Group, Ottawa. And I've got with me today, Hassan Saleh, and we're going to call him Sam. That's the name he goes with. How are you, buddy? Great, how are you? In an ideal world, what would you think would best case scenario for us to completely go green? To completely go green. Very interesting topic. To live in an ideal world, we would need ideal circumstances. So let's stay, let's, let's shift away from the nonfiction. <laughs> Not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. So in terms of what we could do to go completely green, we're looking at the U.S. assistance programs, for example. Um, we, let's look at, let's take a look at the Department of Energy. They put in hundreds of billions of dollars, hundreds of billions, the DOE and the LPO office. And we're not seeing the proper traction. So we're not seeing the proper traction because the human population, whether so the human population in developed countries don't have trust in solar panels because they have access to energy consistently. But populations in underprivileged countries who don't have access to solar panels actually have a higher trust in solar panels because they're able to actually get more energy. Mm -hmm. So. We're seeing Africa, for example, is one of the hottest markets in the world right now for for PVs, even though they have some of the highest energy prices in the world. Yeah. So for Canada to go completely green, you would need a government backed initiative where it's not it's not just private companies. I mean, since since when has energy been privatized? Why is it privatized like these? They're, we're not asking the right questions. It's not about how can we go green? It's why are we going through private companies? to be able to purchase energy? Why is it not a government-based entity that's selling us energy since we are mostly paying the government for our energy taxes? And I mean, don't get me started on all the taxes they're adding on energy prices. It's just, it would need a government initiative, not just to fund. So a government initiative for funding will only get us so far where it'll just pump money into the industry. And then that money will be redistributed to manufacturers and distributors. So, okay, w- let's take a look at the U.S. government. We'll use that as, as a great example where they use hundreds of billions of dollars and put it in the energy manufacturing industry and the and the solar farm industry as well. And they even gave great incentives for company, for households who are currently looking to install mm-hmm. uh, renewables. And they're saying, oh, like these, everything we're doing is great and this is able to produce. No, it's not. It's actually not. So we're not seeing the trust from the people because solar companies are actually at the least trust. I mean, if you're a salesman for a solar company and you're doing door knocking, for example, people don't trust you. They just don't. They they would rather either not go solar or wait for what they think is a new type of technology would be coming out. Even though solar panels have existed for about 100 years and their efficiency has only increased 19%. So the reality is solar panels have been here for a very long time. But they haven't been monopolized yet, which is why they didn't push it through governments. So governments waited until they were able to monopolize the industry so that they could push it. And that's why you're seeing this boom of solar energy over the past five years. And when they've been readily available and, and properly producing energy over the past 20 years. I mean, my parents' house, we've had solar, solar panels installed for the past 22 years. Mm-hmm. And they're still the same panels. Yeah. And we're still one of the, I mean, we could use the Middle East, for example. It's still one of the only places that has energy access 24-7. So the systems have been readily available. Every engineer, every person within the engineering field understands that energy is definitely one of the hardest topics to get into. I remember for myself going into college when I looked into the type of engineering I wanted to study, I looked at electrical engineering and I was just like, yeah, we're always going to need electricity. I mean, it's it's a no-brainer. I'll definitely jump into this. That was really a mix with a lot of passion. And it was just, it made so much sense because population is just going to keep on increasing. So really the initiative would take a government approach for the installs, not just incentives and not just funding companies that want to come and install. So you need to actually bring the price down. And then bringing the price down will, will have a much greater yield. So it's like these governments are afraid that, oh, if these people have lower energy prices, we don't know what's going to happen. What's going to happen is you're going to have much more energy capabilities to use for artificial intelligence and to use for underprivileged communities who, from what we see, underprivileged communities who have higher access to energy actually have a chance at becoming privileged communities. Mm -hmm. So if if you're coming from a third world country and you don't have energy access within your community, whether it's in the U.S. or Canada, your chances of advancement are much lower so we can see this. It's a fact. So it's now now energy is being used to oppress populations. It's being used to oppress people. Yeah. And it's just super intense. 
Yeah, well, the other thing too is like when you have too many cooks in the kitchen, like we're talking about, you know, six different layers to get that energy to your doorstep. That's way too many cooks in the kitchen to start with. And then they are taxed at every single opportunity there is, right? Like all of those six different layers are taxed. So what's the incentive for the governments to, you know, take it into effect and actually work it themselves versus taxing it? Well, then you would need a government for the people. Exactly. So... FDR said the only thing that can solve man's problem is man. We've created a problem. Are we going to take the initiative to solve it? Or are we just going to sit down and, and wait longer? Because so, so when we're looking at petroleum, it takes petroleum 10,000 years to regenerate. And when we talk about 10,000 years, a year is 365 days. And when we talk about what a day is, a day is 24 hours mixed with 12 to 16 hours of sunlight. So it's taking 10 years of sunlight because we are dependent on the sun as, as a population on planet Earth, we're very dependent on the sun. The entire concept of solar energy is extracting energy from the sun directly. Yeah. So the question is, the more uh, time we're passing, the more energy we're spending that we're extracting, the more it's going to cost us to rebalance it. And we're not there yet because... You have all these governments that are just at war with each other that are looking to whether secure the strongest weapons or whether secure the strongest form of intelligence. And they can only do that through energy. So humanity is literally driving itself to extinction. We're doing a lot of like just looking at our feet versus looking forward. Oh, 100%. 100%. I think. And that's, that's what it is. So you're, we're, we're not being selfless. We're not thinking about other people. We're not thinking about what is the healthiest option or the healthiest decision. We're thinking about what is the option that's going to protect us? What is the option? So, so even, and then it's just, that's just a whole topic of governments and war. And, yeah. and I mean, with governments, you would need change within the government and to have change within the government that would need for example, within the U.S., that would need to go through Congress, that would need to go through specific political parties for approval. And as someone who's actually traveled to, I would say, the majority of Europe, North, South America, and the Middle East, I can tell you, 96%, 97% of the planet's population are incredible people. You go to any country, whether it's in Brazil, whether it's in Canada, in the U.S., in the Middle East, in Europe, and you're a person in need and you look like a foreigner and you knock on someone's door and you need help, they will help you. Some of you go, no, no way. No, no they, they will help you. So the majority of the human population is great. Our governments are definitely not the best. So being that our governments are not the best, not only are they creating divide, not only... And that's just the whole uh, topic of governments and divide is really deep as well. So to be able to cause change within the government, you would need to elect the proper officials. These proper officials would need to be supporting the specific goals and targets that you're looking to achieve, which is, for example, recognizing energy as a fundamental human right, which is a basic humanity necessity. And then those officials will be able to get more officials every four years because Congress elections is every four years. And then over time, I think it would be around over eight to 12 years, you'd actually be able to pass a bill. So it's a long road. Thing is, within life, the more patient you are, the better the goal that you get. So it's, it's not a matter of what is it you're aiming for. It's a matter of what is it you're being patient for and chasing any target or any goal it's not just about how you chase it. It's about what you're doing when you're patient. Mm -hmm. So whether you're focusing on, so let's say, for example, you're setting a target where I want to make, I desire to make $10 million by the end of 2024. What is it that you're doing as you're achieving that $10 million? Are you just working? Because then you'll exhaust yourself. You'll go through a burnout. Or are you focusing on multiple aspects at the same time that will all assist you in achieving that? So then that when you achieve the $10 million, you're not just at a point where I've achieved $10 million, but I have no friends, I have no family, I have nothing, to, no one to support me. I just have this money. And then we see in many cases that when people set financial goals, they achieve the financial goal and then they actually... Uh, drift away from everything that's around them and then that actually hurts them even more because money cannot buy happiness 
And then uh, people will say, well, I'd, I'd rather uh, cry in my Ferrari. It's easier said than done. And that definitely financial security should be one of the main topics to be spoken about. I think, in my opinion, financial security, health, as well as relationships, these, these are all extremely important for men's survival in a healthy state. Yeah. And then once you lose one of these pillars, then it becomes you're now moving forward without one of these pillars. So so you can achieve any target that you set. The question is, what is it going to cost you? So let's say right now you're like, I want to, what is a goal for you, for example? Tell me. The goal for me is to put 5,000 people in homes. Buy. By the time I'm done, real estate. Perfect. So that's that's a great plan. Thank you. And secondly, so you're setting this goal. And something about setting goals is we don't know what the cost is. And someone will be like, yeah, but it's, it's, a, it's a nice goal. It's a humane goal. But what is the cost? Do we know what the cost is? No. How are we going to know what the cost is? Mm -hmm. By trying it. So then the question is, do you have the proper tools to be able to handle the cost? Where if you're aiming for a goal and it's costing you this much from here and this much from here, are you equipped to handle the cost that you have not calculated? Because it will never go as planned. That is impossible unless you're profit or something. That's, that's a whole different story, but it's, it's definitely a matter of any target or goal that you set. And then you're, you're not just within your mind. You have, you have external influences. We live on a planet where governments influence our decisions. People influence our decisions, our societies, our communities. I mean, right now you open your Instagram and you see something sad about something that's happening in a third world country or a war that's going on and then it'll bring you down so you're you have a finite amount of empathy and then that's uh, i'm not even going to get started on social media but <laughs> you get all these emotions and then being able to target your emotions properly is definitely a key point in business yeah which is why you would see for example like many entrepreneurs and many company i would say ceos are not uh, on their phones 24 hours and the reason is, is because they're they're looking to target their emotions in specific areas and mm -hmm. parts of their day well yeah there's something to be said about distractions right like for example there's days where i would work in the basement because i don't want to have windows to distract me to look outside that i don't want to have my my watch on me i don't want to have my phone i'm just concentrating work 100 percent. no social media nothing it's all blocked but that's the thing like Going back to that point that you mentioned about when you have a goal, there is that something called opportunity cost for that goal, right? Like it's what you've given up to be able to get that goal 100%. is really what matters. And is it worth it? Is that goal really worth it? You know, time with my family, for example, is it worth it for me to give that time so I can get 5,000 families in home? Same for you. Is it is it worth it for me to give up that time with my loved ones and all of that to be able to uh, bring about change and, and, you know, in your situation, be able to say, I'd love to have energy as a right. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. And to add on to what you're saying, everything is a distraction, every single thing. So what you said is you go to the basement to work. Working is a distraction from your personal life. Mm -hmm. Your personal life is a distraction. So the, the term distraction has a negative connotation. And this is where things get a bit tricky because at one point I actually told my family, I was like, you're becoming a big distraction. And they were like, oh, oh my God, how could you? And I was like, well, I don't mean it in a negative way. I just mean like I have certain goals that I'm looking to achieve at a much sooner time. And I'm actually focusing on you. So I'm not able because you have 24 hours in a day. You yeah. don't have more than 24 hours. So if you're spending your time with your family rather than focusing on your goals, you're automatically yeah. being distracted by your family. We all have goals. the same sort of economical utility. 100%. We call it an economics, economical utility in this situation is the 24 hours. We all have the same 24 hours. Of course. And within everything in life, your opponent is time. So mm -hmm. the question is, if you take too long to make that move, time is not going to wait for you. Yeah. So that so then you're you're losing your chess game. So you need to be quick. You need to be quick. You need to make your decision. You don't back down off, off your decisions. You know, being undecisive is definitely harmful. You need to be quick and decisive on the things that you're doing. In terms, in terms of business, it's about persistence, okay? A quitter never wins and a winner never quits. That's, that's what we say. Mm -hmm. And then it's, go ahead. Uh, I just had one last question just to kind of sum it up for, for everyone as far as VTV energy is concerned. What are your plans for the next two years here oh. in Canada? Oh, yeah, great. So uh, we offer 30 to 40% off any solar provider price. So meaning you get a quote from any manufacturer or any installer, and we'll slash that price for you. 
big time. In terms of Canada, uh, we're actually in the market. So we're definitely in the works for installing uh, solar farms, for installing uh, residential PVs. And uh, yeah, it's just a matter of who's looking to take advantage of this opportunity. Yeah. And, and what's the best way to uh, engage with you guys? Uh, so you could visit our website, v2venergy.com. Shoot us an email. You could give us a call. And uh, yeah, we even have an Instagram page. You could uh, send us a message on Instagram. And, Perfect. And one of our sales engineers would be able to contact you. Sounds like fun, man. I really appreciate your uh, making the time for us here today. And sure. definitely, we definitely veered away a lot from VTV Energy, but it's it's in a good way because at the end of the day, we were talking about this massive sort of goal that you have, which is making energy a fundamental right for every human being out. Uh, so Sam, really appreciate you being on the show. Appreciate your time. And for folks that are watching, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe. And if you want more episodes of these, make sure to hit us up with the comments and let us know about any business that you think of in the city that would be of value for us to bring on the show and to bring to, uh, to the forefront of everyone here in Ottawa. We're on sort of a crusade to make sure that Ottawa is not a boring city and we would like to kind of continue that. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe. Thanks again, Sam. Thank you.